Hey guys, what I've got here is the Rode Wireless Go 2 dual channel wireless microphone system. So Rode released this last week and I was fortunate enough to pick this up on launch day and I published an unboxing, which is why the box is all ripped. Rode's boxes are awful by the way, I'll just say that. But I published an unboxing and I showed you the accessories such as the pouch and the cables etc. And I also spoke briefly about the units themselves and I showed you the buttons and I showed you what they do. But what I'd like to do today is a more comprehensive overview as to how you use these microphones. Now, many microphones are used in a very simple way. This is the Rode Video Micro. It's basically plug and play. There's no battery, there's nothing. It's very simple. But Rode do have microphones with more options and you know, you've got pads and different gain levels and different things. This is the Rode Video Mic NTG. Again, this is a simple microphone to use, but like any microphone, you do have to play around with it and you do have to familiarize yourself with the settings. And it's the same story here. These are not difficult to use, but when you first start using them, you're a little bit unsure as to how it works. So this is for those of you who have bought this or who are thinking of buying this. So if we jump over to the browser, we'll show you the official website, etc. So this is the official sales page and from here you can go to Rode Central. This will bring you down to the software to download and we'll speak about that later. There's also a downloads page and there is the Learning Hub. Now, the Learning Hub is this page and I will say that, you know, you get a, a, a manual when you get it here, this manual. It's their Quick Start Guide. And the Quick Start Guide, which you can see here, it's okay, I mean, it, it is a quick start guide and it will help you get started, but there's a lot of things this omits. It really doesn't tell you every single thing about the wireless go to, and there's a few things in there that you don't know. Um, you'll get some information from the data sheet as well as far as specs go, but really, if you want to learn about this, what you want to do is go down to the FAQ at the bottom of the sales page and use the user guide from the, this learning hub, as you can see at the top of the page there. So we'll refer back to this a few times because a few things I want to speak about. But uh, yes, like I said, go to the, the go to the downloads area and make sure you download Road Central. You will need to use that to actually change some settings and to download recordings and all that as well. So be sure to check out those. They'll all be linked down in the description area. So let's kind of just have a brief overview as to how these things work initially. So we've got one receiver and we've got two transmitters. And I'll take the, the little uh, windshield off just now. So this is how it works. Um, these transmitters have one button, this one has a few others, but I'll start with the, the main receiver. So there's a, a button at the top, and as you can see, it's just the O from Rode for the power button, and you hold it in and it will switch on like that. Now you get about seven hours battery life with uh, these devices and unfortunately these batteries can't be replaced. It's one of the negatives of uh, you know, wireless microphone systems like this is that the battery can't usually be replaced, but it is what it is. So there is the main screen. Now that will change once we've actually activated the, the transmitters, but I just want to take you around. Here is the, the Type-C port at the side here. Now this operates as a connection to your computer, but also for charging. Um, you've got the 3.5 millimeter input there. Now here we've got decibels and here we've got pairing. And then at the side, we've just got wireless go. I'll show you, I'll be coming back to this in a second. So don't worry if all of that doesn't make sense yet. Now here we've got a transmitter. Now the transmitter, um, you've got the input here for lavalier microphones and, or any type of microphone really, 3.5 millimeter. So this is a lavalier go. I actually unboxed this today. I did a really bad job of unboxing it, but yes, I unboxed this today. And this can be plugged directly in there like that. Now, one of the great things about this, and I'm sure you know this already, is that you don't have to use the 3.5 millimeter input because there is a microphone here. So you can just hook it into your shirt or your jumper or something and you've got the microphone there. So there's two indicators there and you've got the power button at the bottom. So again, the Rode Zero button or O, um, you hold that in and it will switch on like so. So the two indicators there are this one is power and this one is to show that it has paired to the receiver. 
And you do the same with this one as well. And you can see that this came with um, transparent cover there, but I'll take that off. So it's the same thing. If you're going to be using both microphones, you just hold this in and it will do that. And obviously they will flash red or something if it's not paired or, you know, battery isn't there. So once that, uh, once the transmitters are connected, you will, that you know, these are active and you can now start using them and you can see that's going up and down there. Now, what you'll notice there right now is there's only one channel. Now that is because I was changing something earlier on in the settings area. I'm going to reset that in a second. There should be two channels there when you take this out of the box. Now, I'll quickly go around there, but I want to maybe just reset this in order to show why that's going on. So I just went into the Rode Central software there and I changed it from merge to split so that you can see both channels because that's the way it should be when you take it out of the box. I'll show you what I did later on, but at this point, I just want to show you this display. So both channels are separate now and you can see what's going on there. So it's very easy to use this. Now, you've obviously got the, the power button at the top. Now, if you press that, that will actually change the brightness, whether the, the screen stays on bright. You can see that little, see next to the middle battery. So you've got both channels and the interface, and then you've got number one, which is this transmitter here. And you can see the battery life of this one, and you can see its audio level. Uh, and you can see whether the signal is good as well. Obviously, that strength of the kind of Wi-Fi symbol there will change if there's, you know, if this was 100 meters away or something, it would change. Uh, in the middle is the battery life for this, and the, the little icon next to the battery button in the middle, the battery icon, is the, the display. So that's whether you want to leave this on bright when you're not using it. Now, down at the bottom here, you've got the decibel pad, and this can also be used to mute things. But if you look at it right now, see if you look at the triangle. So that's no pad, so it's just, you know, normal gain. Then you go down to minus 24, and then you've got minus 12. And that gives you different levels. Now, again, I'll show you in the software later, but in the software, you can change it so that you can go in increments of three decibels. So it gives you a little bit more control and you, you can actually go down to minus 30 decibels. So it gives you an extra six decibels at the lower end that you can go down if you want to. Now, the other thing to note here is that uh, you can use this to mute both transmitters and both transmitters can mute themselves too. So here, you, you know, imagine you've got two people using these microphones. You've got a, a transmitter one selected, then you've got transmitter two selected and then none. If I select one, I can push this DB button and it mutes it. So now it doesn't matter what I do, nothing will happen here because it's muted. And then I can just unmute. Well, sorry, I need to select it again. And I can unmute like that. So you can mute both if you want. Just do that and mute both of them. Unmute, unmute. Now, here's the thing. Both of the transmitters can mute themselves too. So. As you saw there, the mute button comes up. All you have to do is push the power button on the transmitter and it's muted. Now, here's the thing. Here's where they kind of got the right idea with this, but they've not implemented it perfectly. I love the idea that you can mute the transmitters from the receiver. And I love the fact that someone using a transmitter can do it themselves too. If you can imagine a scenario where you're interviewing someone and then they have to take a call, they can simply push this button and they can mute themselves so they're not being recorded. The problem is that there's nothing to indicate that you have muted this. It's, it's been shown there, but if someone was like, say, you know, 10 meters away, 20 meters away, they might push this thinking I'm muted, but there's nothing here to show that it is muted. There's no indicator. The lights aren't changing. Nothing's happening here. So the person who's actually being recorded might push this twice and then all of a sudden they're, they're not muted again. So I'm hoping this is something they can do with uh, the firmware. Maybe they can do it with software where they can make it so that one of these buttons or both buttons go red or something when it's muted. I don't know. It's a good idea that uh, that you can mute from the receiver and the transmitter, but I don't know. It just seems like they didn't do it as well as they could have. You need to have an indicator here to know that this is muted. A little red icon or something. But um, yeah, that's basically how it works. Um, 
There's not a lot to it, to be honest, as far as setting things up here. Most of the settings are in the software. But there are uh, some things to note here. Now, like I said, you can put in your lavalier mic, you can put in your, you know, your microphone, uh, something like a, a video mic NTG will work as well if you want to do it remotely. You've got a lot of options here with the 3.5 millimeter connection. And if you look on the website, you can connect smartphones and different things as well. You can connect to your computer if you want. And if I scroll down here, you can see some of the features of that. If I scroll down. So there, just to talk about, there's the merged and split mode, which we'll show you in a second. So here you can see some examples. You've got connecting to cameras. You can connect directly to the computer. And if you've got a Type-C to Type-C, you can do it an Android phone or Type-C to I.O. S, like a lightning cable, you can go directly to your smartphone or your tablet. Now, the benefit of, of that is, and you can see it here, if you connect directly using USB Type-C, you can then use the 3.5 millimeter output for monitoring the audio. So that's quite a good idea that you can monitor the audio when you're connected via Type-C. But the big thing here that I think a lot of people were unsure of was the main microphone. So they do provide three furry windshields for each of uh, each of these. You've got one, uh, let me see, there's another two in here. You've got one for the receiver and two for the transmitters as well. Now, in the previous version, these were not the best. They were a little bit hard to keep on, but they've did a number of improvements here. The main thing here is that they now have a kind of locking mechanism. So if you can see the two little white dots, you see that there? So there's two little white dots, and if you look at it there, it's got instructions, it's got two little dots there, and, well, it's kind of self-explanatory. You just put this in, make sure you squeeze it in. I can do this right behind the microphone. And then you hear a kind of a, a click and then just turn it. And when it turns, you can, well, you can feel it now. I'm, I'm obviously, I don't want to damage the, 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 the furry windshield, but once it's done, you know, once it's locked, that's it. You know, it's done. It does make it a little bit harder to get into the lavalier mic, etc. here, here but you can still kind of see the indicator. But that's all you do, and just push it down again to turn it off. So it works quite well. You just have to make sure that you can see where the, the little white marks are, the little buttons, I guess you could call them, with the little uh, nodules. Let's call them nodules. Get those lined up, get them aligned up here, and just twist it. It does work really well, it really does. So at this point, you should have a good general understanding as to what the Rode Wireless Go 2 can actually do and you should know what the buttons do what the user interface means you know what all the symbols mean and yeah you should have a good idea as to how it all works but what i recommend is spending about 20 or 30 minutes just playing about with it changing settings pushing buttons and doing lots of recordings and really that's the biggest thing that you have to do it's the most time consuming thing that you have to do you have to set this up with your camera or your phone or your laptop or your camcorder, whatever you're recording through, you want to set this up and you want to do lots of test recordings. And using this camera as an example, you might want to set this at five out of 30 and you might want to set the pad at minus 24. But for another camera, it might be minus 12. And for a smartphone, well, it might be completely different again. You need to change the settings depending on the device that you're using, what you're recording and everything else. It's audio recording things always change and things can and will go wrong. Now, earlier on, I did talk about the fact that I changed the setting using Rode Central. Now, I want to show you that application next, but before I do, I want to quickly explain what I was doing. Previously, I had one merged channel. Now, if you do that, it means that you can have a backup channel. Now, with the Rode Wireless Go 2, you can record one channel here, one channel here, but if you want, you can merge both of these channels and then have a safety channel that's got a minus 20 decibel pad. There's pros and cons for both of those uh, solutions, both of those situations. But in certain uh, scenarios, if it's you know just if you're just recording one voice, just recording yourself, there's a good argument for putting on the safety channel so that if anything goes wrong, you've got a backup if you are peaking. Now earlier on, I was testing that because if I jump to my webcam here, you can see my Zoom audio interface, and this is where I've got all my microphones connected. So what I was doing today was connecting the receiver here into my Rode VXLR, and that allows me to connect directly to my uh, Zoom audio interface here, the Zoom F8. So I can connect like that, 
and it allowed me to kind of mess about with the audio settings and it meant I didn't have to go back and forth swapping files. Now, what I noticed, and it's a little bit of a strange thing, but what I noticed is that when I was trying to listen to the lavalier mic and I was trying to listen to the microphone, when you've got it on uh, separate channels, you can only hear from the Rode uh, Wireless Go Transmitter 1. So this transmitter, transmitter 1, when it's in dual channel mode or separate channels, you can only hear this one via the preview, via the, the, the audio monitoring. When you put it to merged, you can then hear this. I was a little bit surprised by that. I just assumed that you could still hear both of these transmitters. But when both of them are like, um, you can see there, when both of them are separate channels, then you can only hear this one when it's connected and you're monitoring it. It's a very unique situation. I don't think this is going to affect anyone at all, but it is something that I wanted to point out that if for any reason you're, you're wondering why this one isn't going through your audio interface and you can't hear it, it's because you need to set this as merged. Okay, let's look at Rode Central. Now, like I said, you can download this from the official Rode website. And once you do, you will get something like this. This is what it looks like. And I've I've got my overhead camera here, which will move it around a little bit. So this is Rode Central here. And all I'm going to do is connect it up. So I've got the I've got this sticking to my finger, by the way. But what I'm going to do is connect up the provided cable and I'm going to connect it here. Now, when you connect this to Road Central, it will detect it. If you've not connected this before, you should get an option to update it. Now, I'll show you that one because you need to update all of these separately. And I've updated the receiver and the transmitter here, but I've not updated this one, so I'll show you that in a second. But once this is connected, you'll see the settings here. And this is it here, the Road Central application. Now, this is the receiver, and you've got a lot of different settings here. You can see the battery life, the clock, the firmware version and I jumped all the way from 1.0 up to 1.23 and from what I've read online initially this part here that split and merged initially that said mono and stereo which was very confusing but they have fixed this so look at all the settings at the top here these are the main settings you can turn the back backlight on and off and then you can change the gain mode so the the default gain mode is low mid and high and that's Minus 24, that's minus 12, and then it's zero. But you can change that, and you can go uh, to the fine mode, and then you can go down in three decibel increments. And that means that you can go beyond minus 24, and you can go to minus uh, 27 and minus 30. And it also means that you can go between as well. You know, you can go minus 21, minus 18, and minus 15. So this will give you a little bit more control over the gain levels. I've been using this in a very simple way so far, but I think this will give you a little bit more control over what you're doing. It's maybe the option that most people will opt for. So now you've got the split mode here, and like I was showing you there, you can still see it there in split mode. But if you change it to merged, and you can see that there, when it's changed to merged, you only see one indicator now because the channels are merged, that makes sense. There, and you can also see it now says minus 15. By bringing that up, I'm trying to do it without disconnecting, but um, you can see that it's changing. So it's quite good. You can see, actually see the changes in the audio interface when you're you're doing it. So there's the merge mode, but there's split mode if you're using it with two people. Now, for me, what I'm doing, it makes sense actually what I'm doing because it's just me right now to have it on merged and then have a safety channel. And that means a backup channel can be recorded. And you've got the backlight there, and you can set a marker as well. So there's different options there as far as what the power button does. There you go. Changes the backlight, change it to a marker. Um, I guess a marker is probably more practical there as far as, you know, you push the power button, and then all of a sudden you've got you've got a marker in your audio that you can go back to, and you, you know uh, what was happening at a certain point. So that's how it works with the receiver. When you plug it in, you will get an update, and I can show you how that works just now because I'm going to plug in a transmitter. So this is transmitter one, which I have not updated as yet. And the good thing again, when you connect these is they will actually charge up as well when you connect it to your computer. So I'm getting, I'm getting the famous USB notification sound through Windows and you can see version 1.00. So I need to update it. And that's what you'll need to do as well. 
At the moment, all of these are shipping out with version 1.00, but you'll want to upgrade to the latest version so there's no bugs, everything's up to date and you've got any additional features, etc. So it doesn't take too long. There we go, update complete. And now we've got the, the roads, I was going to say the firmware. Now you've got the road central viewing for recordings for the transmitter. So this is something I've not spoke about as yet, but it's something that I don't think this is something I'm going to use. I'll say that it's not something I'm going to use, but if I jump back to the browser for a second, you can see onboard recording. So the recording system it's, it's okay as a backup, but I wouldn't advise using it as your main recording device. It's got a few limitations here as far as what you do. For example, when you set it up in recording mode, it just automatically records. It doesn't have a start or a stop button. It just automatically records. And it's a little bit quirky, but I'll show you that in a second once I've changed the settings. I just wanted you to be aware that you can record through this. So... If you had did a lot of recordings, you would see a lot of recordings through this area here. So what I'm going to do is click on settings and you can see what we've got here. So there's a few different recording settings here. Again, this is the transmitter. This is what you'd be recording with and this is what you would be plugging in your lavalier mic into. So all you have to do if you want to record is click record and that's it. Now, when you do that uh, and when this syncs back up, you will see a record symbol. Now, you can't see that just now. You can't see a record symbol because when a transmitter is connected, the receiver is still active, but it's basically disconnected from the transmitter right now. So you won't see that record symbol, but it is there and I'll show you that in a second. So I've got record on, you can do a mute lock. It's got the battery level and then you've got recording. So you can record 43 plus hours, standard quality, and then broadcast quality if you want, and that's seven plus hours. So that's, that's all your different options there. So the firmware has been updated and now it's got record mode. So if I pull it out here and now, if you look now, oh, I'll connect this up. Here's another thing. When you do connect from uh, disconnect from the computer, the transmitter is automat automatically set off. So you need to power it back on. There you go. So now what you can see is there's a red button next to number one. Now, if I had to set up the second transmitter, it would be the same. There'd be recording. But that red button shows that it's recording and it's actually recording right now. It's set up so that when you power it on, it starts recording. It just starts recording. Again, that's why I'm saying it's not exactly the most practical thing. But there will be many situations, I guess, or some situations where that could be useful, where you know, people are using these uh, devices in very different ways. And maybe there's a situation where you just want to turn it on and start recording audio. But for most of us, if we're connecting via cameras, etc., it's probably not something you're going to use. Now, I'm going to connect it back up. So I'm connected now. And what happened there is that computers will see the transmitters as drives because they are drives. They're, they're storing audio recordings. And I had disconnected this drive and then connected back up when I plugged the cable back in. But it kept connecting and disconnecting and connecting and disconnecting. So Windows had kind of get caught in some sort of feedback loop with the connection. So I had to eject it again, take the cable out and then plug it back in. And now I am connected. And when I did connect, I did see USB drive E. And there are two files here. Now these files effectively have the same file name same date, same time. And that is because I've got one merged recording of transmitter one and two and one backup or safety track. Now it'd be a similar story if I was using split mode and I had both transmitters active. One would be one track, one file would be for transmitter one and one would be for transmitter two. So there's a lot of different ways you can set this up. Mono, stereo mode, you know, merged mode. You can do a lot of things with this, but if you see the same track effectively, then, well, that's what's going on. So when you bring up the Road Central app again with the transmitter connected, you will see a recording down the left-hand side. And you'll see a lot of different recordings here if you've got many different recordings. When you click on it, you get a very, very basic, very simple audio player. And this audio player, if I can hear it myself, this audio player, it really is just to see what the file is, just to hear what the track is. 
and then you can export export the file. This isn't for you know doing any kind of modifications or listening listening to it in depth. All you can really do here is listen to it and then export the file. And when you export the file, you can rename the file. You can select WAV or MP3, 48 or 44.1 kilohertz, um, and you can change the bit rate as well. And that will change if you obviously select MP3, you'll get different options there. So it's kind of limited there and there's no option to delete. So I went into the settings area and I noticed that there's a delete button there, but that was obviously going to delete everything. But when you check on the website, this is actually what you're supposed to do. You can see here on the road website that it says deleting your recordings. When storage in the transmitter is full, new recordings will begin overwriting the oldest recordings. After a recording session, it's a good idea to export all of your audio and then delete the files from the wireless go too to ensure that you don't lose any audio you haven't saved. So that's basically how this works. You get your files like this, you get a big list of five files, 10 recordings, whatever, and then you export the ones you want and then you go in here and you click to delete them all. And then you start from scratch. So this is a nice feature, but this is something that I do consider to be a bonus feature. It's not something I'm going to be using, so I'm going to switch this off right now. But this is a nice bonus feature, and there might be many situations where you might use it. And for some people, it might be a great feature. But at the, you know, at the time of recording, it's kind of basic how it works. You know, you can't delete the files. You can only really listen to it and then export the file. It is a useful feature. I am glad they've included it, but. For most of us, we'll just be handling the recording through your laptop or through your cameras or through your phone or through whatever. But yeah, this is the Rode Central app and you will see different settings depending on whether you connect the transmitter or the receiver. Now, what I would say about the software in general is that you don't have to use it all the time. My recommendation is to install it. And then when you first get the wireless go to connect it up, set it up the way that you want to set it up, you know, recording or not recording or merged or split channel. Once you've got it set up, you can basically forget about the software and just return to it, you know, whenever you need to change settings or maybe every few months when you want to check if there has been a firmware update. But it's not something you need to access all the time. Most of the time you will be just doing things directly on the receiver or on the transmitter. So. Yeah, this is where most of the action will be. I hope you've all enjoyed this look at the Rode Wireless Go 2, and I hope you've got a better understanding as to how this microphone system works. My advice is that once you've opened the package, refer to the quick start guide, and then start messing about with the buttons and start doing recordings and just familiarize yourself with how this works. Then go onto the official website and download Rode Central, the application which they offer, and then update the firmware and then refer to this guide. This guide is, in my opinion, the best way to understand what this system can do and what it can't do. It's a comprehensive guide, gives you a detailed overview of features. And by this point, you should have a good understanding of how it works anyway, but this page will detail everything else that you might have missed. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please do leave a comment below. And until next time, take care.